How does one find a stock? You can't exactly go to the supermarket shelves to pick one off, though you might get an idea or two there. You don't just take it off of a list, though again, a list can be a starting point. And you can't just say, I like that stock. Though again, it's not the worst place to start sometimes. But however you go about it, when there are thousands of stocks, it can seem really intimidating to just pick one to start your investing. There's no perfect way to do it, but there are several common routes. I'm going to lay out in a series of videos four different ways that you can find stocks. Each of them offers you a starting point, a way to pick out a stock that you might be able to buy, but then you have to do more work after that. Let's start with the first one, what I call Peter Lynch style. Peter Lynch, Peter Lynch style. style. Who is Peter Lynch? Peter Lynch is a famous investor best known for two things. One, he was the manager of Fidelity Magellan in the 70s and 80s when mutual fund investing became a huge boom and when Fidelity Magellan was one of the best, if not the best performing mutual funds in the country. He's also famous for writing several books about how to invest, including One Up on Wall Street, Beating the Street, and a couple other ones. We're going to talk about one of his most famous insights, which is what I'm calling Peter Lynch style investing. Peter Lynch, Peter Lynch style. style. Buy what you know. Peter Lynch's big idea can be summed up there. Invest in companies you understand. In his first book, he writes, the best place to begin looking for the 10 bagger is close to home. If not in the backyard, then down at the shopping mall, and especially wherever you happen to work. The idea is that we have insights available to us every day. The stock market is happening all around us. The stocks represent companies that are in the world. So everywhere we can see things and we can observe things and sometimes we can observe them before they're widely known. And yet, a lot of investors will just chase the biggest craze or some tip that they heard from somebody else. It's the summer of 2023, so let's take AI. Think of how many people are investing in artificial intelligence without really understanding which companies will win, which companies will actually benefit from artificial intelligence, which will actually make more money because of artificial intelligence or gain a better market position, or even how artificial intelligence works or what it means or what it does. It doesn't matter. For a lot of investors, it's just enough for a company to be going up and for the news to say it's because of artificial intelligence, or if the company throws artificial intelligence into enough of their press releases, that investor is happy and buys into it. Instead, think about a professor who notices that all of his students are downloading the same app that they're using on their phone and talking about all the time. Or think about a parent who realizes that they're doing all of their shopping at the same chain store for their child's clothing. Or think about somebody who at work notices that the construction product she needs for something that she's going to put out is on back order for 15 months. Each of those are insights that could be leads to potentially interesting stocks. There are always caveats. On Peter Lynch style investing, the biggest one is that you still have to look up the company. You can't just say, I like this idea, I'm gonna buy it. You have to research to say, is this company actually converting my insight into profit? Are they growing? Are people actually buying the way I think that they're buying? And does that turn into a good business? That's one part. You also have to research the stock because some insights are already well known. You can tell me, hey, all of my friends buy Apple products and spend a lot of money on Apple. And we all message each other with blue bubbles in our instant messages. Everybody's aware of that. It's in the stock price. We talk about things being priced in where everybody already knows it. That one's already priced in. So you need to go a little bit further. Another thing I am cautious about is assuming that what I like will match what anybody else likes. My, my taste may be particular, and so I'm careful to extrapolate just from my own experience. 
I feel like Lynch style investing is stronger when you're not just basing it on your own insights, but what you see and hear from other people and observe in what other people are doing in their lives. And the wider the pool, the better. I've picked at least a few stocks using Peter Lynch style investing. It's resulted in successes and failures, but let me share a few examples. I consider my wife's hometown grocery store a pretty fertile ground to look for stocks, as I figure if something hits in small town Michigan, it's probably available nationally, and it's something that I'm not always aware of. I found there a peanut butter that I actually liked that wasn't Jiffer Skippy. It was Smart Balance. It was a natural peanut butter, and I thought, hey, if they're able to make a natural peanut butter that I actually like, as somebody who has an edge in peanut butter, then maybe the company's worth investing in. So I bought a few shares. I sold them a few months later when the stock had doubled. I should say, the stock sold, the company sold three years later at about the same price I sold. So I think I got luckier rather than good, but it's an example of that sort of insight. An example that didn't work out well was Stitch Fix. I'm fascinated by the company's approach, how they combine data science with human intuition. I hate shopping for clothes, so I like the product. They select clothes for me and that's great. I bought some shares before the pandemic and the stock soared during the pandemic, but I never sold. And at the end of the day, I ended up losing quite a bit of money because not enough people were like me and not enough people actually wanted the service and Stitch Fix's growth strategies just weren't suitable. They weren't really effective. So that cost me money. One last example, I love traveling. And the website I use the most for booking hotels or even alternative accommodations like an Airbnb style apartment is booking.com. Booking isn't as popular in the US. It's the same company that was is Priceline, the William Shatner ads from back in the 90s and 2000s. Booking.com or Booking Holdings has overtaken Priceline. It's not so big in the US. They're also well known in the tech world for how good they are at conversion and at advertising on Google and other places. So I knew them from a professional perspective. So between the personal and professional insight, I bought some shares. And I've owned shares for about five years, more or less, in booking. There's a lot more to that story, but it's an example of I saw something in my life, I saw something in my professional life, I researched it, and I saw something I liked in the stock. My examples illustrate one more double-edged sword about buying what you know. On the one hand, it's fun. You connect your life to your investing, and maybe you find something new that not everybody is aware of. On the other side, it's really easy to get attached to your idea. Because you're the one who generated it, you give it more weight than something you heard from somebody else or something that you got off a list or whatever else. It's a rule of all stock picking that once you buy the stock, you can't turn off your brain and stop analyzing. You have to follow it and see how the company performs over the months and years that you own the stock. This especially applies to buy what you know. I have a soft spot for Peter Lynch because he's a Massachusetts native. And he talks about in one of his books, going to the Burlington Mall, which is my hometown mall, to do his Lynch style research. He's probably spent more hours there than I ever have in my life. He's a famous investor. It doesn't get much better than Peter Lynch. He's a legend and we'll study him more in the months and videos ahead. At the core of that belief is this Lynch style concept of invest in what you know. Take advantage of the everyday insights you have and apply them to your investing. He views this as the best way to outperform the professionals and have success in your investing career. I think whether or not it's the best, it's definitely a worthwhile tool to have in your toolbox. Subscribe to the Short Investing Guide for more videos on the stock market. The next one is going to be another way to find stocks that is not Peter Lynch style. Check out shortinvestingguide.com for a post with all of the information in this video some links, some additional notes to give you a little bit more context. And stay tuned for the next one. I hope to see you there. Mm -hmm.